Um, on to Madame Alislip, please. And thank you. Uh, I'd like to continue on with uh, the, my previous colleagues' uh, questioning, but I also do want to express our, our deepest thanks, because if we don't have honorable men like you and women uh, to take on this auspicious responsibility and do the very best to protect the institution and the victims, then we have no hope. And your contribution here today is furthering that a great deal. So thank you very much. Um, I'd like to talk to you a bit about the comment you made when you said um, you wanted the minister to do his job. When you took the complaint uh, or the allegation uh, about uh, General Vance to the minister, what were the options available to the minister to do his job with the information that you gave him? Well, I, you know, I don't know if this falls in the framework of a minister or a manager or a supervisor, but I was his direct report. I went to him with a confidential issue and I asked him specifically, please keep this confidential and please get back to me with some advice. So as for part of doing his job, I think if he had done that, that would have been part of doing his job. Absolutely. And could he have taken further action independent of giving you advice to um, get to the bottom of this allegation? Well, I think that's been very apparent with the latest move we've made at the top of the Canadian Armed Forces. So there were actions available. Uh, so, you know, I'm not going to sit here and try to skirt around that question. Yes, I believe he had other, like I said, levers at his disposal. Uh, and the evidence that you provided him, had he taken it, would have furthered that end? Well, it would have proved beyond a doubt that the allegation had merit and uh, it may have given him another, I uh, may have given him an option to look into it in a different way. Uh, I have no idea. And because these allegations were against the chief of the defense staff, who is above in a reporting authority, the chief of the defense staff. I think that would be the minister. So it was it could have been viewed as being his job to make sure that the CDS was in fact uh, doing the job that he was in uh, and to look at the information that you had provided for him to be able to do that. That's correct. Could you tell us also a bit about, um, I think you mentioned that you had met with the deputy secretary to cabinet. Is that correct? Or the no, PCO? That... Okay, so the PCO. Um, is it your understanding when speaking with uh, the members from the PCO that they would take it to cabinet? As I stated earlier, I was shocked that they even knew about it. Um, you know, I'm sure... Uh, PCO could have offered a different lane of service, I think. Uh, I was absolutely shocked they knew about it. So I was kind of put on my back heel when I went into the room, and that's what was asked of me. Uh, I think there's, like I say, there, you know, you you find yourself in a position where you're kind of caught in a framework, where either I report to the minister for one thing, but I have to go to the deputy for a handout or something else. It's asinine, you know, and PCO, there's another group we could have a whole other committee meeting on. Uh, you know, to go to that office uh, looking for help and assistance in the predicament I was in, uh, I didn't get any. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I'm sorry, but I don't have great faith in my, uh, from what I've received. Uh, so I don't have great faith in PCO. So we've talked about the allegations specifically around the chief of defense staff, not what they were, but how it progressed. And we've discussed what the minister could have done, but you also brought up some very discouraging information around the process. And sometimes we have bosses who are ignorant and negligent of the process and therefore are undermine doing stuff because of it. Sometimes they're willful and deliberate in their interference in the process. And then sometimes it's what you've described is where they escalate to using the process as a means of intimidation 
and against ensuring a positive outcome. Could you give us some idea of how we've arrived at that and how we can possibly regain the trust and confidence and fix the processes so that that is no longer within the purview of the people to do such a thing? Well, I think, you know, getting out of it, uh, I think mother, others have come before me and said that it's a cultural change. It's going to take time. But until the government of Canada makes a decision to get this right, we're going to have this conversation again in six months. So the buck take- stops with the minister and the prime